Where did Navi come from? Why was Navi chosen to guide and protect Link? Why did Navi up and leave at the end of the game? What happened to Link's mother? These are just a few questions I had while reminiscing about one of the best games ever made. The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I think we can all agree that this game is a masterpiece full of hidden meanings, subtexts, and some of the most phenomenal dialogue and storytelling ever put to cartridge. With that being said, the opening questions I brought up are not very fleshed out in the game. A fairy named Navi is basically thrust upon Link, nagging him throughout the game, albeit helpful nagging, and ultimately guides and protects him. The story of how Link, a Hylian, was raised as a Kokiri is touched upon here and there, but could use some additional explaining. Well, good news for those interested in finding the answers to these questions. I have a working theory that potentially clears everything up and will give you a new perspective on the entirety of Ocarina of Time. Well, maybe. This theory may require a bit of an open mind and that's kind of an understatement. I just thought I'd have some fun and go with the flow of a seemingly crazy idea that floated into my thought stream, but actually, there is some relatively compelling evidence to support my inane fixation on this ludicrous proposal. Let us indulge in this theory, one I have aptly dubbed the Zelda theory that will make you appreciate Navi, also known as the Fairy Theory. Let us begin with the first question I posed. Where did Navi come from? Well, some may say that fairies, like Navi, naturally occur around fairy fountains throughout Hyrule. While that is true to an extent, this theory is not plausible, and I'll tell you why. Navi doesn't have the same properties as fairies from fairy fountains. Just like all other Kokiri guardian fairies, Navi can make direct contact with her partner, Link, and not restore his health, whereas fairies from fairy fountains restore health the second they make contact with someone. Then there's the obvious difference in color. Fairies from fairy fountains are pink always, while Kokiri Guardian fairies are of many varying colors. Therefore, we can rule out the theory of Navi coming from a normal fairy fountain. Then that begs the question, where did any of the Kokiri Guardian fairies come from? The answer may lie in this piece of dialogue from the Kokiri girl at the end of the Kokiri Forest Bridge. Partway into the game, she says this, I wonder if the Great Deku Tree gave life to everything in the forest. I mean, in addition to us Kokiri. By saying in addition to us Kokiri, she is clearly stating that the Great Deku Tree created the Kokiri and that he has the ability to create life, acting as their equivalent to God. But now, if the Great Deku Tree can create the Kokiri, wouldn't it be logical to assume that he would be the one to create their guardian fairies as well? Yes, that would be logical. So, there we have it. Case closed on this one, I'd say. Yep, there's absolutely nothing left to discuss about the origin of fairies. Nope, nothing else at all, at least for now. Let's tackle that second question, and this one's a bit more in-depth. Why was Navi chosen to guide and protect Link? Okay, so let me ask you another question that I've never seen anyone else ask. Why does any child in the Kokiri forest besides Link even have a fairy? They don't need help or protection as they're safely stowed away in the forest. There are no monsters in the forest and they can't leave or else they'll die. So why would they need a fairy? Just to, what, talk to? They could just talk to each other, couldn't they? When the other Kokiri teach you how to use Navi at the start of the game, all they really show you is just how to Z-target stuff and talk with your fairy. That's the extent of their knowledge of the uses of fairies, that they can use them to talk to people who are far away. Not all that helpful if you ask me. You also don't ever catch any conversations between the Kokiri children and their fairy. They just kind of stand there in silence until you walk up on them. So now that we've established that the normal Kokiri fairies are basically useless, we can assume that Navi was specifically chosen and trained in some way that would help Link. I mean, how else would Navi know about all the different monsters, items, and dungeon mechanics throughout all of Hyrule? That would indeed require extremely specific training, wouldn't it? Training that I don't believe every Kokiri Guardian Fairy receives, as they will never need to use it with their children. This may be a way to explain how it took so long for Link to receive his fairy in the first place. Navi could have been being trained by the Great Deku Tree. Navi is a highly specialized fairy and, as a matter of fact, appears to be the most powerful 
and knowledgeable fairy in all of Hyrule, besides the great fairies of course. The fact that Navi is extremely powerful and important is even stated by the great Deku Tree himself. After explaining to Navi that she'll be aiding Link in his journey at the beginning of the game, he tells her, fly Navi, fly. The fate of the forest, nay, the world depends upon thee. Alright, so another question. What is the world? Well, it's not Hyrule. We know that Hyrule is not a world, due to what the Deku Tree Sprout tells us after beating the Forest Temple. He says, some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified this country. So Hyrule is confirmed to be a country. This means that Navi was also designed to help Link outside of the country of Hyrule, suggesting that Link's destiny was not completely fulfilled by the end of Ocarina of Time after all. Another thing the Deku Tree Sprout tells us is this. The Deku Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny whose fate would affect the entire world. The entire world. So both the fate of Navi and Link would affect the entire world. Meaning that the actions of Navi in guiding Link would directly affect the entire world. Keep all this in mind, it's very pertinent. We know from the start of Majora's Mask that Link, directly after the events of Ocarina of Time were concluded, went on a separate journey, a more personal one, where he went in search of Navi in the woods. This then led him to save the country of Termina. So yes, there was still more to Link's destiny, and it did involve the broader scope of the world. And Navi led him there. This leads us into the next question. Why did Navi up and leave at the end of the game? Now, there are already many theories about this, and uh, the most agreed upon one is that Navi's purpose was fulfilled, meaning that, like any other fairy, she had to die. She didn't want Link to watch his best friend die, so she flew where he couldn't see her, and died. However, as you've heard in this video thus far, I'm theorizing that this is not the case, and that there was still more for Navi to do. I don't think that Navi just flew away so that Link wouldn't have to watch her die. I think she was leading him on the chase that would result in him saving Termina. Think about it. Link losing Navi at the end of the game made him sad, as she was the best friend he'd ever had, and he wished to find her again. So his hunt began. He went deep into the woods, came across Skull Kid, and everything played out as intended. See, Navi's own destiny was at risk, because had Link known what he was getting into next, he probably wouldn't have gone to Termina. The quest that would transpire in Termina would be brutally challenging, traumatizing, and exhausting. Thus, Link had to be coaxed there under a shroud of mystery, so that he wouldn't suspect another huge, life-altering adventure so soon after his one in Hyrule. This is why Navi left Link at the end of Ocarina of Time, simply to get him to go after her, allowing Navi's destiny, as well as Link's, to be completely fulfilled. Rather simple if you think about it, yet not many people have theorized this. Now that the first three questions have been addressed, the fourth may seem a bit out of place. What happened to Link's mother? Some of you astute Ocarina of Time fans watching might be screaming, She died in the fierce war described by the Deku Tree Sprout. And as far as we know, you would be correct. But gather around, children. I'm going to spin a yarn for ye. The Deku Sprout recounted the following story to Link after he completed the Forest Temple. <clears throat> Some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified this country, there was a fierce war in our world. One day, to escape from the fires of the war, a Hylian mother and her baby boy entered this forbidden forest. The mother was gravely injured. Her only choice was to entrust the child to the Deku Tree, the guardian spirit of the forest. The Deku Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny, whose fate would affect the entire world. So he took him into the forest. After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kokiri. And now, finally, the day of destiny has come. That's all fine and good, but I would like to propose something that may sound a bit uh, odd at first. Is it possible that Link's mother was able to live on somehow? Okay, okay, that sounds a bit crazy. Allow me to transition to another question. What even are fairies? You might be saying, hey, we already discussed this. Some are healers, others are guardians. 
And yes, we have partly discussed what they are, but I mean, what are they? What are they made of? What are they composed of? This is never explained in any of the Zelda games, and most players, including myself, simply consider them just another race in the Zelda universe. Which is also correct, but that still doesn't explain what they're made of, or what their essence is. Another question. What's something that is similar to a fairy that we've seen in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask? And I'll give you a second. The answer is... Pose. Pose are essentially the antithesis of a fairy, as they only harm people instead of helping them. But much like fairies, they can be kept in bottles and only used once. There are also many variations of Pose, just as there are many variations of fairies, like big fairies, great fairies, etc. They can also be found just floating around Hyrule or hiding in various locations, just like fairies can be. And what are Pose made of? The Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia explains that Pose are spirits that become monsters due to a lingering attachment to the world of the living. So basically, they are composed of the spirits of those who have died that harbored regrets in life. Now, if Poe's are really the anti-fairy, as I outlined, and as the game suggests, could it be that fairies are actually composed of the spirits of those who have died that accomplished good deeds in life and had no regrets? I'd wager so. Do you see where I'm going with this? Link's mother had no regrets in life, since she managed to find safety for her child by placing Link under the care of the Great Deku Tree. And it's evident that that's all she cared about, seeing as she was fatally injured. I mean, that's all she could do, really. And she accomplished that. Could Link's mother have reappeared as a fairy? Maybe even as Navi? Uh, hold on. Hold on. Substantiating that claim is going to require some major evidence. Absolutely. And I believe I have that evidence. What is the evidence to support Navi being Link's mother, though? Great question. Let's get started. Did you notice what the Deku Tree Sprout said toward the end of his story? Let's take a look at it. After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kokiri. Let me read that again. After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kokiri. After. After she had passed. Now, I don't know about you, but I doubt that the Great Deku Tree would just sit there and watch as Link's poor mother bled out or whatever she did. How long would she be laying there before she died? A day? Two days? A week? A month? Yeah, I doubt that the Great Deku Tree would just watch that happen without helping her. Unless... He knew what would happen, that she would become the guardian fairy to protect Link on his quest of destiny. After all, the Great Deku Tree could sense quite quickly that Link had a destiny. Surely then, he knew that not healing Link's mother would actually be more beneficial, because she would become his helper in fairy form. That would be her destiny, and the Great Deku Tree sensed this. What about the second part of that quote though? It says the baby was raised as a Kokiri, but only after the mother had died. What do the Kokiri have in common? They're children. Well, okay, Link is a child, so he fits in in that regard, but what else do all Kokiri have in common? They have fairies. Yes, in order for Link to be raised as a Kokiri, he would need a fairy. This supports why Link was raised as a Kokiri only after his mother had passed, because then there would be a fairy waiting for him, the fairy being the spirit of his mother. But as mentioned before, she must have been trained by the Great Deku Tree, which is why it took so long for her to be assigned to Link. Alright, so even if all this is true, why didn't Navi ever mention this to Link? Why not tell your son that you're still alive, just in the form of a fairy? The answer to that is relatively simple, Navi was under the direct authority of the Great Deku Tree, who she considers her god. The Great Deku Tree even says this to Navi, Navi the fairy, help Link to carry out my will. It very well could be that part of the Great Deku Tree's will was that Navi should never reveal this information to Link. But why? Well, it would make him realize that he wasn't a Kokiri. And while it's true that he does find this out eventually, it's only by the will of the Deku Tree that he ever does. 
Plus, if Navi were to reveal this information to him prematurely, he would realize that he didn't belong in the Kokiri Forest and he may have left before ridding the Great Deku Tree of Ganondorf's evil. Well, now the question is, why not tell Link after he's already found out that he's not a Kokiri? At that point, it's really a judgment call from Navi. Link had already had it revealed to him that his life was basically a lie. If Navi were to tell him that she was his mother, he may feel even more betrayed. Or perhaps Navi felt like she had robbed Link of a normal Hylian childhood and felt guilty that he was an outcast where she had brought him. It could have been shame that prevented her from telling him. There are many reasons for her to keep this a secret, just as many parents that give their children up for adoption keep their identities hidden from them for various reasons. They don't just go up to their kid if they see him in public and say, hey bud, I'm your real parent. Nah, they don't say that, even if the child knows that they're adopted. It's just not something people feel comfortable doing. And that kind of wraps this up here. I mean, this theory is uh, it's a bit crazy. Honestly though, I feel like it holds up rather well to scrutiny. Now, if you see any holes in my theory, feel free to point them out. And if I can't refute your scrutiny, then I will literally subscribe to you. No joke. And yes, this is a challenge to you all to try and disprove my theory. And I mean, make your case, plead your case nice and juicy. And if you don't put a thumbs up on this video, your mother may wake you up with news from the Great Deku Tree tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more, my Hylians.